Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Happy Sunday. Today is day three in Paris, France. If you haven't seen day one and two, I will go ahead and put a card up here. So today we're going to the Louvre and then a couple other things depending on how much time we have. We were so exhausted after Euro Disney that we passed out until like 8.30. So we're off to a bit of a late start. We were hoping to be out the door by eight. It's now like 10.30. So we're just gonna see what we can fit in today. So again, if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe below, give this video a big thumbs up, and let's get into it. So right now, we are walking to the Louvre and actively almost getting run over every few seconds. My gosh, there are just so many bikers around here. big old triangle that's the entrance to the museum and now here we are okay now we're gonna go buy our tickets so there are two lines they're not very long here it looks like you can buy it from a person but it also looks like you have the looks like you have the ability to buy them from one of these computers as well so we just bought our tickets the museum tickets are 15 euros each and the audio guide is five euros each for a total of 20 euros per person. You do not have to do the audio guide, but I would very much recommend it. There we go. Oh, that's so funny. Their audio is a Nintendo DS. <laughs> they also have like cafe with snacks and such. Here's the menu. So if you need a little snack while you're in here, you definitely can get one. Oh my gosh, they even have dessert. Oh, they have chocolate chip cookie. Yeah, they have beer too. They have beer? Heineken. Oh, they do. That's cool. Oh, and they've got donuts, all kinds of stuff here. Oh, that's nice, they have juices. So the total was nine ten. thank you. And we got two regular water bottles and one sparkling water. So the prices aren't too bad, kind of what you'd expect at a museum. Okay, so on the audio, you get to pick your language. So it's just the same one for everyone. And then we're gonna do English. Oh. This is the largest Sphinx outside of Egypt. So here's a replica of the Louvre. Just so you guys can understand just like how huge this is. Like the scale of it is insane. These are all those giant gardens with all the trees. Like this is, this is just crazy. So it looks like the Louvre actually used to have a whole front section. All this brown area, all like the brown buildings in the front, that all burned down. 1985 they built the uh, pyramid. Oh, they built the pyramid in 1985. Okay, so yeah, that's definitely newer. So now we are in Egyptian antiquities. So I'm in the Egyptian antiquities and I just found out that no one knew how to read hieroglyphs until 1822 and it was actually a French man who worked at the Louvre who um, was the curator of the ancient or um, Egyptian antiquities and he spent so much time with it he was able to decipher it. 
I thought we knew what was going on for a long time. I watch a lot of history for like Egyptian, like Egyptian history documentaries and such, but that's never come up. So that was a fun fact that I shared with you guys. Look at the detail. Even things like so small. Just so much detail goes into these. It's incredible. And like thinking about like what tools they used, it's just mind blowing. So here are some of their weapons. So just a bunch of like axes and uh, knives. It's really cool. So these are the chisels that they use to make the hieroglyphs. Let me see if I can bring you guys in a little closer. That's so interesting. I always wondered what they looked like. So all of this furniture is from ancient Egypt. They used to bury them with a lot of um, <laughs> items, including furniture, which I didn't realize. I knew that a lot of their personal valuables, but furniture as well. So these were recovered from a tomb, which is why they're in such good condition. But it's so cool to see what like their rugs look like, their chairs, their baskets, their footrests. huge it is oh my gosh okay so on our audio tour they just told us although this is already probably about six feet tall it's missing the lid the lids in London so this must be like an eight nine foot situation that's crazy Yeah, they had writing all inside too. The detail, even the back. Wow. Okay, so also the inside of the boxes are completely decorated and the inside of the lids. Oh my gosh. The amount of effort and hours. This is an actual human mummy. Oh my gosh, it's, it's kind of creepy, but also really, really cool. And here's the mask. I mean, you can even still, like, see the fingers. That's crazy. So we just entered ancient um, Greek. Or their ancient, yeah, ancient Greek collection. So incredible. Oh my god, he's strangling a goose. That's rude. Look at the detail on the ceiling. Wow. I could be wrong, but isn't this where Hercules went to get the blessing from his father and the statue came to life? I could be wrong, but I feel like I'm not. All right, we're still in the Greek area. Tell me this is not serving you Hercules vibes, okay? This is, I just, I feel like I'm in a Hercules museum right now. If you guys have seen some of my videos before, you may know that I collect coins. And these are some ancient coins from Islam. Look how cool this is. They used to make them out of glass. What? 
and some of them were just like glass and just looks like they've been stamped. They weren't even like cut to an exact shape or size. That's so cool. And then here's obviously um, as they began to work with metals and such later on. This is just, wow. These glass ones are incredible. Like, yeah, look how irregular they are. They remind me of like wax stamps. That's what I thought they were at first. I do not know what type of animal this is, but like, look at its mouth. I would not want to come across one of these. <laughs> I don't All right, so now we are in the Roman Empire. Looks like we're in like the gladiator era. Look at these helmets. It's really cool. Here's some weapons. And here's like the top armor piece. Look, it's like velvet inside and it looks like it's padded also. That's really nice. And, oh, okay. Your weapon holster is also velvet inside. And then, wow. Okay, so this is the back of a shield. I mean, look, there's a nice little cushion there in the middle for you. It's all nice and velvet. Like, I mean, this actually looks kind of comfortable. Okay. Here's what the whole getup looked like. Or, I guess not the whole thing. Oh, they have little mittens. Nice little mittens. Yeah, see? You look all hardcore and sassy from the front. Little do you know, it's velvet inside. So you see this? This is a globe but it's not a regular globe. It's a celestial globe. So it's of the universe. So it has like, I think it has like um, constellations. There we go, you can kind of see what's going on. Look how cool that is. Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? You have to wait in this line? Wow. Although it is kind of nice because by the time you get there, at least you have like time, like set time to take your photo with it. Okay, look how huge this picture is. And then how tiny the Mona Lisa is. I can't believe they put them across from each other. All right, we got up to the front. Here she is. Wow. All right, they're ushering us out, so. This Cupid's Kiss is my favorite sculpture. Let's see if we can lighten it up. Here we go. Here's Cupid's Kiss. Okay, so this statue, we are dying at. Okay, so there's this like multi-headed, I guess, I guess it's a dragon. Um, so he's already removed two of the heads right here. And, oh, the heads are back there. Oh, there they are. They're the fallen heads. And he's he's just doing this with the club. I mean, we're, we're going full caveman. And he's just baseball batting the heck out of these things. Okay, so we are exhausted. We've been going out this for four hours. So um, it's really cool. You can look up what exhibits or artwork you want to see. And it will navigate you there. So this is navigating us to the final art piece that we want to make sure that we see before we leave but um we've given up we haven't even seen like half of the museum but yeah it's already been four hours i mean you need an entire day to see everything here all right now we are in the french sculptures and this room is so cool but this right here is the highlight so cool so this statue is one of their top 10 most famous statues. I'm not sure what exactly it is. It's, I'm not sure if it's called, oh, from the park. Oh, okay, so this is from Versailles. You see place at the entrance in 1683. That's really cool. It's depicting a lion 
biting this guy's, well, his butt. So it kind of looks like Lion's winning this battle. Just a few of the last pieces that we're gonna be seeing. Okay, so now we're lost. <laughs> we're trying to find our way out, but while we're finding our way out, we're finding ourselves in all these cool new exhibits. This looks awesome. In this area, there are just huge tapestries. And they're just all along the walls. So we finally found our way out. So we um, ended up seeing almost all of the museum by accident. So solely this wing is where we started. And then we went over to this one. I think it's pronounced Danon. And then there's a third wing over here. Um, Rich Jelu, maybe. Uh, that's the one that we just came from with all like the French statues and the tapestries. And that's it. That's all of it. So actually we only didn't finish about half of that final section, maybe less, because when we got lost, we saw most of it. So despite buying your ticket here in person, you still have to pick a time slot. So we selected the one o'clock time slot, and then we, it was actually only 12.30, but they let us in early. So we started this at 12.30. It is now 4.30, and let's see how many steps we did. Because I- many stairs we did. Yeah, because I really feel like we, did the most okay 15,000 and almost 300 and that's 5.7 miles 24 floors um, you might not need a full day here but you definitely need at least half a day um, also like with the audio thing we gave up with the um, audio after the first wing of the museum if you do that it also really slows you down and if you really want to look at everything in every exhibit you probably need closer to I don't know, maybe six hours. So definitely takes a while to get through this place, but definitely worth it. Beautiful, so cool to see all of this history and unique art. Absolutely loved it. If you come to France, make sure you do not skip this. It is worth it. <laughs> all right, we thought we were exiting the Louvre, but just kidding. It's actually connects to an entire like shopping mall. So they're just, Doors. Okay, so the mall continues. I don't think you guys can see from here, but there's like, there's like, oh my gosh. There's like a McDonald's up there, more clothing stores. So I think the first part's more like the luxury area. Um, it was only really like bags and perfume, so we didn't stay too long. And then up here, it looks like there's more of like the regular, like everyday shopping. Look how cute this little candy shop is. They've got different like chocolate covered nuts, lollipops. This is so cute. We just walked into this other mall and I wanna show you guys just how stunning this architecture is. It's a five story, just absolutely incredible, like shopping mall. Wow. So we just stopped at this restaurant called Kong. drinks just got here we both got a peach bellini and then there's this cute little I don't know what it is but I love the mini clothespin they use to attach it this place really is just the most incredible okay guys if you come to France or Paris you have to come here 
you have to come here. So we're the only ones here right now. I'm sure they're usually super busy. Yeah, it is a Monday in the middle of the day, so locals aren't here. And then with all the travel restrictions, there's even a lot of restrictions coming from other parts of Europe. So I'm thinking this is very unusual because with a view like this, I just can't imagine that they are not always packed out. So we're on our way to Notre Dame. And I don't know if you guys have seen, I don't, I don't remember the name of the movie, but it's a Tom Cruise movie. And it's like, he tries to save this girl and she's like, okay, but I need you to do me a favor first. And so he like hijacks like this prison bus and helps them break this guy out of prison. And then when he comes out and he's like, he realizes that he's been played and he meets with her. This is where all of that happened down here. So if you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about, please comment below because I cannot remember what it's called. I just recognize it and I know it was in Paris. So, yep, and it's right across from Notre Dame. Here it is. So the whole backside is still being renovated and fixed because of the fire, so you can't go in. We can only do photos outside. So we're gonna try to see how close exactly we can get. Um, I was kind of thinking we could go right in front, but it's looking like we might not be able to. So here's the courtyard in front of Notre Dame. Unfortunately, this is as close as you can get. We were hoping that maybe you could walk around and get in front of these big old barriers, but that is just not an option. So we uh, decided to stand up here to try to cut out some of this artwork situation and get more of Notre Dame. But here she is in all her beauty. <laughs> So we did not make it far. Notre Dame is right there and there is this cute little cafe So we decided to stop here. Yeah, they're like these lounge chairs <laughs> And then they have like cute patio seating. They do have indoor seating and some patio seating over there as well And then we're just taking a look at the menu. It seems to be pretty pretty extensive um, but something exciting is that they do have happy hour here, so that's really cool. So our drinks just got here, so I got a rosé, or a Syrah rosé, and then they gave us little uh, olives, green olives. Darren got a... Bordeaux. He got a Bordeaux, a 2016 Bordeaux, and then they brought us an entire bottle of it. We were under the impression that we just got a glass, um, but here we are. So as a bit of a snack, Darren got some more escargot. And then I got shrimp tempura. And then, oh, it comes with a um, sweet and sour sauce. It's not ketchup. And then every table comes with some bread. So the shrimp tempura is really good. How is your escargot? Really good. Really good. Yeah. Um, also, he's convinced that the bread is especially for him, but I'm pretty sure it comes with the table because every restaurant we've gone to, no matter what we order, we get bread. But he thinks uh -huh. that he's special and they gave it all to him, the entire baguette, all to him. Yeah. Questionable. Okay, so we have been here for a while. We finished as much of our beverages as we could. And now we are going to start our 30 to 40 minute walk back to the hotel area. Um, right down the street, about a block away from our hotel, is this Indian restaurant that looks amazing. So we're planning on getting that for dinner tonight. We were hoping to actually get it for lunch, however they close between breakfast and dinner. So we're just going to be doing it um, for dinner today. They did, they're only open for like two, three hours at a time. So we're feeling pretty lucky that we're going to be able to fall right in that time span. So I will show you guys when we were there and uh, give you a bit of a review. Something really cool about these taxis is that the top lights up. So all the taxis are black. They're not yellow like in the US or white like in Mexico. But here they are all black and at the top, so if they're open or available, they are green. If they're taken, they're red. So you always know if the taxi you are trying to get into is already taken, which I thought was super cool and innovative. Oh look, look how you cute this little cafe is. Cathedral. Oh, yeah, you have a fantastic view of Notre Dame. Wow. Okay. Michelle. You don't come Michelle. up on Google. Yeah, know. a lot of these small little restaurants and cafes do not come up. Oh, that's cool. It has another really good, good view. All right, we're taking another detour. We've made it maybe three blocks. But we found a great Canadian pub. What is the Canadian pub? We don't know, but we are here to find out. 
So we found a spot right by the entrance and it does look like they have a happy hour here as well which is really cool and then scanning menu okay so it looks like they have some pretty standard things so we've got nachos chicken fingers quesadillas uh, potato skins salads burgers sandwiches and then they have an extensive drink menu all right it is starting to rain but little miss prepared had an umbrella in my little Mary Poppins backpack. Darren cut his foot earlier, like his shoe was like rubbing him in a way that was like irritating his foot. I had band-aids. You need anything? I've got it. I've got it. Really? In this bag? I've got it all. My phone was dying a few minutes ago. I've got an external battery. Within 10 minutes, I was at 50%. I'm telling you. You need it? I've got it. Literally sprinkling to pouring a matter of 45 seconds. Oh my gosh. Okay, so we walked half the way. We both got sprayed with water by cars. We're soaking wet. We ended up getting a taxi for the last half of the drive. And now we're gonna go to this Indian restaurant just one block over from our hotel. <laughs> This restaurant smells amazing. So here is the name of it. Sweet sauce into this. Then add this spicy water like this. In a one go in your mouth and have it full. Mmm. More sweet sauce and less spicy water. Full. Smells amazing. Oh, I feel like this is one of the best things I've ever tasted. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that's a, that's so it's it. basically like crispy rice and the veggies inside? Yeah. That's a potato chickpeas and ball is prepared with a flour of rice and semolina. All right, well, I'm, I'm getting involved. Mm. Okay, I've brought out the phone flashlight to show you guys. This is like a rich sauce, and this one is like spicy water, so that's what adds the heat. Let's see. Le premier qui regarde d'ailleurs perd toute dignité. C'est dans le top 11 des règles à connaître sur la place qu'on regarde le jeu le plus stylé de l'histoire. C'est officiel. And voila, it's ready to eat, and you eat it all in one bite. Spicy chickpeas curry. That's your butter chicken. And this rice is sauteed with the saffron, turmeric, coriander, mustard grains, and curry leaf. Just smell it. Oh my gosh, that smells amazing. Oh God. Wow. It smells great. Looks fantastic. And then this Thank one you. has spicy cheese in it. And I just got a plain naan. Okay. That's the cheese naan. Spicy. Okay, so I'm gonna get a bit of rice. So this is actually the serving spoon, but just so we can get everything. Okay, this is the butter chicken sauce. Oh my gosh. This is so good. What? This is amazing. This is better than anything I've ever gotten in the States. Okay, so we're basically going to be eating here half the nights. Cheers to that because I'm obsessed. Alright guys, that is it for this video. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe below, give this video a big thumbs up, and don't forget to check out the rest of my Paris vlogs. I will link the last one up here, and there will be many more to come. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you in my next one. Talk to me, baby, I've been waiting.